I've been asked by a number of subscribers as to the progress of the Gang of Seven, you could say, the Seven Purple Emperor Lava, which I've taken or rescued, it depends on how you look at it, from the Sherwood Forest area. Well, here is said update. So, the Gang of Seven, the seven thirteen star purple emperor lava which were overwintering on a range of sallows in the Sherwood Forest NNR. You may well wonder if you haven't seen the previous video to this one as to why they are now sat in this cage awaiting the first warm days of spring. Well, the reason for that is that their safety over the winter throughout anywhere in the Sherwood Forest NNR cannot be guaranteed. Ten were initially found during the autumn by Nick and Samantha Brownlee and myself and after the disappearance of one of those ten within about two days of it being found I made the decision to bring all the remaining other ones that I could reach into captivity. Some were rescued from a sallow near the major oak which had partially been cut down and so the lava would have been doomed. Any lava on sallows in the Sherwood Forest NNR are all in danger, really, as far as I'm concerned. There is no guarantee that come the spring, that sallow that any Purple Emperor lava is on will still be there. It is that bad. People might laugh and say, no, you're being ridiculous, but we lost yet another mature sallow only a couple of weeks ago at the entrance to Budby. It's now a lovely sort of stump. And so I made the decision to collect these seven lava. It's a decision that I wish I'd done sooner to be honest because we've lost another one. I went, the other week I went up to Seymour Grove to check on one that was within reach there only to find that that one has also gone. Thankfully these seven are here. Had they been out in the wild, still on their original trees, would we still have the seven? I very much doubt it, to be honest. And so these are safe and secure. And there's been a little bit of a development in the last week. Now, our seven larvae are on these five stems of goat sallow. These are the stems which I cut off in the process of bringing them into captivity. And they remained on these stems ever since. They were brought in in December, I think it was, towards the end of last year anyway. And they've been safe and secure throughout the new year. And as we're approaching the last couple of days of February now, they continue to seem absolutely fine. In terms of movement, there has been a little by two individuals, which I'll show you in a minute. One has been wandering around a little bit and after a bit of a wander, stayed tucked in at the bottom of one of these stems. And another one near the top of one of these stems somewhere, I'm not sure it's this one here, has also been on a little adventure. In fact, it did something unusual. It stayed where it was, but turned around. And has since turned around again in the last couple of days since I checked on these. It may well have moved from its original pad of silk and just relocated to the tip of one of these shoots. But I'm pleased to say that all seven L3 larvae are on these twigs and still doing really well. Well, here's the first of our seven. Perfectly healthy. This is the correct coloration. That's sort of almost an olive green. Before they do become properly active in the spring, their coloration, that greenness especially, will become 
more vibrant. Coloration overall throughout the winter can vary between individual caterpillars, but the majority are this colour, although they can be slightly yellowish too. But there's been no movement from this one. You can see the silk pad upon which what this one is resting, especially at the lower end of the caterpillar here. So, number one is doing very well. And here's the second. Our second larva, similar colour, perfectly natural colour and perfectly natural resting position, which is adopted by virtually all purple emperor larva and say you'll have seen on this channel how some will overwinter on the old leaf scars on thicker branches but generally overwintering is carried out and is usually tucked up against a bud now initially on the first warm day first really warm day of say march caterpillars will become active and will often move around and relocate to another bud but they won't resume feeding until the leaves are out. Presumably, while resting alongside a bud, not only does it offer really good camouflage, the caterpillar looks like a bud, but the caterpillar also can detect when the sallow is beginning to grow and the leaves become large enough for the caterpillar to start to eat. So, that is number two, perfectly healthy, no concerns there. Now here's our third larva. I'm showing you sideways on. This is one of the larva which has moved. In fact, when I looked last week, it was about two inches lower down on this particular stem, quite near the soil in the pot. But it's now resumed a more typical sort of resting posture, tucked up. It's that joint, sometimes you will find purple emperor larva over winter in joints of twigs, or the, certainly in places like this, but also where one twig comes off another. Again, perfectly normal coloration and nothing to worry about there. But interestingly, that is one larva which did become active last week when we had temperatures around. 15 degrees centigrade so we've seen three larvae so far here's four and five and you'll notice or you may notice that this top one here is a paler color it's green looks perfectly healthy but it's quite paler and certainly paler than this other one here at the side of this bud just below both say perfectly normal coloration for purple emperor larva at this time of the year and say so from now on as we start to get more regular milder conditions and temperatures that coloration will be become a more vibrant green and certainly when they start to feed properly for the first time in several months they will then really green up but these two larva both doing okay now uh, next larva is this one. Now this is the larva which relocated from elsewhere on the stem up to this position it is now. Look, second bud from the top. Not that these two buds are any good. These are both dead buds. That's the better colour and normal colour for a bud. But last week this larva was facing downwards which in my limited experience is something that L3 larva never do, I've, ne I've never seen it but it was totally facing the wrong way, they normally always face upwards but within the last few days it's been all changed again and it's decided on a different vantage point or a different viewpoint and so here it is back to the more typical facing upwards and typical coloration, nothing wrong with this one very healthy indeed and this is the last of our seven again perfectly healthy this one hasn't moved at all this may have been the one 
when I looked at them last week when we had the first of the mild weather one did move its head to the side several times which is something that they will sometimes do especially in mild conditions it's only in probably at the really coldest of temperatures where they remain absolutely still and obviously are at the most dormant in mild conditions say so you can get movement movement up the stem to relocate to another bud or you can get some movement from side to side and that's usually where the larva is continuing to lay down silk on which it rests this one perfect coloration again it's a classic example of an l3 purple emperor larva at this time of year and i'm pleased that They've all come through so far with no diseases either. That's always something to worry about. And I should say that the only protection they get is from glass top table from which they sit partially under. They are completely exposed to all the elements. Well, that's them tucked up safely and securely in a minute I'll put them back under this table it'll be several more weeks yet before the goat sallows begin to open and these larvae become active enough to want to start feeding but I have decided to keep these larvae and to rear them through and then release the adult butterflies those that make it hopefully they all will but you never know disease could set in with one or two but I plan on releasing in back in the area in which these caterpillars were taken as adult butterflies I think it's safest I wouldn't like to release these back continue to monitor them only for them to do their usual disappearing act once they've reached fit in star or are about to pupate I've seen that happen so many times so hopefully we can get these through and of course I'll be giving regular updates in the process. So, another update forthcoming, probably once these have started feeding. I can't wait, and it won't be long either. We're at the end of February now, and by the end of March maybe, these will be active enough to start feeding. 